Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to you. Good morning, boys and girls, and Miss Karen. How oh, are you? I'm great. Good morning. How's everybody been this week? I have been wonderful. Oh, and the good. rain God sent. Oh, I oh. know. It's been wonderful. It's made my flowers bloom. Oh, I know. My garden's loving it. And the grass is growing. Yep. Yep. So we've yep. got a lot to be thankful for, boys and girls. Yes, we count we our do. blessings. So, uh, well, what time is it? You know what? I, the clock on the wall says it's. Yeah, it, is it time to your breakfast? Uh-uh. What time is it? What time is it? Is it time to eat our breakfast? No, 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 it's not time to eat our breakfast. What time is it? What time is it? Is it time to brush our teeth? No, 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 it's not time to brush our teeth. What time is it? What time is it? Is it time to take a bath? No, 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 it's not time to take a bath. What time is it? What time is it? Is it time to play with our toys? No, 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 it's not time to play with our toys. What time is it? What time is it? Is it time to go to bed? No, 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 it's not time to go to bed. So what time is it? What time is it? Is it time for Bible class? Yes, 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 it is time for Bible class. So who and came? Who came today? Y'all, is is everybody, you know, you've got your mirrors at home and here's a mirror. Can y'all, I wonder who brought their smile to class Did today? Do you have your smile on? Let's see. I wonder if you, who's got their smile on. Smile really big. I bet you do. Oh, I see some oh, teeth. Yes. Yeah. I can't see mine. I mean either, but it's there, boys and girls. Oh, we have a yes. smile. It's there. So. You know. <coughs> Miss Karen, we've been talking about Paul. Yes. That man had lots of troubles, didn't he? he Remember, did. boys and girls, last week we talked about him being in prison and still. Well, today we're going to learn about friends and how friends forgive and being a kind neighbor. Miss Karen has a book. You want to do that book right now, Miss Karen? Oh yeah, it's a it's a book that says who is your neighbor, and and it 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 says it asks the question who is your neighbor, but it also tells us kind of how to be. It says who is your neighbor? A neighbor is part of your family of love. He does not live in your house, but he should live in your heart. Neighbors are everywhere. They live in the house next door and maybe in the tent next to your tent or down the hall two farms down a country road though that's neat looking some neighbors live far away they may be people you have never seen different faces from different places you can thank god for his blessings by sharing with these neighbors food to eat, clothes to wear, medicine to make them well, or money to build a schoolhouse or dig a well for water. So there's all kinds of ways that we can love our neighbor. With neighbors who live nearby, you can share backyards, apples from your apple tree, falling leaves, a pole, a secret. Who is your neighbor? A neighbor is someone who needs you. So we, we can be, when the Bible says about love your neighbor, it's anyone that anyone out there that that needs that and, needs. and our lesson is going to talk about someone who needed who needed that a right friend yes you can be a good neighbor by helping someone who needs help by caring what happens to others or by giving instead of getting neighbors work together that's, that's important Miss Helen yes neighbors play together that's always fun and neighbors pray to our father together that's the most important isn't it a neighbor, or that's very important anyway. That's a very important thing. A neighbor is part of your family of love. God wants you to widen your heart to include all of his children. So there's boys and girls all around the world. That's right. But they can all be our neighbor, right, Miss Helen? Right. And today we're going to talk about another place where Paul is at. He's still in prison, Miss Karen. But 
So, Miss Karen and boys and girls, do you remember Paul? Yes. Paul, he was, he was shipwrecked. He was in prison lots of times, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He but you know, he ships. made lots of friends along the way, didn't he? He did. The jailer, the king, and yes. his wife, and the governors. And they treated him with respect in some ways because they did let him continue to meet with his friends from the church that Christ built. That's right. And so, today we're going to learn another story about Paul. And he is in, he wrote another book. Remember last week we talked about all those books yes. that Paul wrote? How many yes. were there, boys and girls? Thirteen. Thirteen, wasn't they? That's right. Well, do you remember one of the books was called Philemon? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Do you know that's written to a man named Philemon? That's right. And I just happen to have Philemon. We're going to pretend this is him right here. And this, they think, is his wife, Aphia. And this is Archicus. He, Arch. Archippus. He, he lived there. Yes, it is. Yeah. They had something all in common with Paul and Onesimus. This is Onesimus. And that's a long That's name. a hard one. That's too. a hard name, yeah. But they were Christians because they had heard about Jesus. That's right. And they had obeyed that word that they had heard. Yes. And they were baptized. And so they were Christians. Well, now something special about, that we learn about Philemon in that book is that <clears throat> Philemon was wealthy. And he had a, probably a big house. And the church, do you know what the church is? Is it the building? No. What is it, boys and girls? It's the people. people. That's exactly. right. Well, the, the Christians, the church met at Philemon's house. Wasn't That's that right. special? Well, <clears throat> when Paul wrote this book of Philemon to Philemon, he had, a, he had a friend named Onesimus. Now, Onesimus used to live at Philemon's house. That's right. He was a slave. He used to be his slave. His That's slave. right. But you know what, boys and girls? Onesimus, he ran away. Oh. He did something wrong from at Philemon's house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, Paul met up with him when in Rome. Mm -hmm. And Paul taught Onesimus yes. about Jesus. And Onesimus obeyed, and he became a Christian. So it, the Bible says that Paul loved him like his son because they were Christians. They were brothers in Christ. <clears throat> and so <coughs> Paul wrote a letter That's right. to Philemon, and he said, ask him, let me read to you what it says. Paul talked to Onesimus and told him that he needed to go back to Philemon. Yes. And he needs to say, I'm sorry for what he had done. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be right if he stayed and helped Paul and still had something wrong with his Philemon. master. Yes. And to be a Christian, you have to apologize. That's right. You have to say, I'm sorry. You have to make things you, right, don't you? That's right. And so, Paul wrote a letter to Philemon and sent it with Onesimus. And in Paul's letter, he asked Philemon to do the right thing. That's right. And forgive Onesimus and welcome him back. Not, not as, as a slave, slave though. As a brother. As a brother. Right. And you know what Paul also said? What? If, if Onesimus owes you anything... Oh. I will just charge it to my account. That's, so he wasn't was, that nice. That was great. He was going to make sure that it was all taken care of. That's right. He he got it all smooth. It was That's all right. good because if you want to be a Christian, 
you have to try to do the best you can. That's right. And make things right. You can't hold a grudge against oh, someone. Oh no, they you, didn't want held uh, held between them like that. No, no, no you got to make things right. That's right. So. Paul had a friend. He had lots of friends. Lots of friends. But yeah. he wanted his friends to be help each other and forgive. And so we have a new word today, guys. <clears throat> forgive. Looky there. And wow. what does that mean? Well, it's Helen, I think it, it it means that when someone has done us wrong and they tell us they're sorry. Then we need to we need to be we need to be happy and be okay with them and put it behind us. Don't that's we? right. And we that, need to love each other. That's right. And I think you've got us something to show yes, that even I better. Yes, I do. I do. Boys and girls, I've got a little something here that I'm going to show you on about how about forgiving. And in fact, since we've used the word forgive, and you'll have to forgive me because my mask keeps sliding down. So <laughs> you'll have to forgive me for it keeps sliding down. But since we had the word forgive, Miss Helen, how about let's just write the word forgive? I'll okay. do that, okay? So here's the word forgive, okay? Let me write it. Now, boys and girls, I'm writing this with a permanent marker, okay? I wouldn't use these at home because they are permanent. But it's a it says forgive and it's in a it's in a black marker that is permanent. You know when that dries, we can't. When it dries, look, I try to wipe it off and I can't wipe it off. It's just kind of like when when Onis when Onismus when he did Philemon wrong, he did something wrong and you know what? It just kind of stuck with him. It, it stayed yeah. with him, you know. It was going to follow him it was. wherever he went. And until in he his heart. right, and until he took care of it and said he was sorry, why well, it just kind of stayed with him, just like this pen staying on the spore. But now watch when we you, we're gonna we're gonna put this red all over it now. Look at all this. I'm gonna mark all this red. We're gonna try to wipe all this and see what happens. Okay. Now you know that wouldn't come off. Now let's see what happens. <gasps> Looky there. It's mostly, let's see, let's do it again. Let's do some more. We say I'm oh. sorry. Looky there. We said he said he was sorry and he wanted to make it right with him. <gasps> Look! It's coming off, boys and girls. <gasps> Did you see that? It's coming off. And it's it's going away. That's right. Just and like when he said he said he was sorry and went to make it right. Then when Philemon forgave him, it was no more. They just went on and they were good. And they were brothers. They were brothers and they didn't try to hang on to that and, and they right. just put it behind them. They didn't worry about that no more. And that's kind of God when we do wrong. Sometimes when we do things wrong and we tell God we're sorry, does God hang on to that and keep it? No. no. He if he it's no more, is it? He just it's not any if more. we pray to God yes. and we mean it. That's right. Now, if we had our friend and and you did something wrong to him and you said and you mom says oh, now apologize and you say I'm sorry, but you really didn't mean it because you really still That's had right. it in your heart. We have to mean it, don't. That's right. That's right. But we can when when God we ask Him for forgiveness and we say we're sorry, then He can forgive us of what we've done wrong. Can't That's we? right. So we're getting close to the end of Paul's life. He's this is getting he he did lots of good things in his life. Paul was quite a man and we should be he was like Christ and he he treated people the way he thought Christ wanted them to. Yeah, that's right. I think we need to sing about I the Bible because so. that's where we learn about that's it. That's right. Before that, you know, I thought of a song this week, Miss Karen. We haven't sang Roll the Gospel oh, Chariot. I and love you know, that one. And Paul has been doing that a lot. He rolled the Gospel Chariot. Yes, yes. he did. And we also had a lesson back a ways about Philip and the eunuch. That's and they right. got up in the chariot. And they actually were in a chariot. That's yeah. right. So let's get okay. your chariots this out, boys and girls. This is talking about a different kind of chariot. Roll the gospel chariot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So. All right. Roll the gospel chariot along. Roll the gospel chariot along. 
Roll the gospel chariot along and we won't tag along behind. If a brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. If a brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. If a brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. And we won't tag along behind. If a sister's in the way, we will stop and pick her up. If a sister's in the way, we will stop and pick her up. If a sister's in the way, we will stop and pick her up. And we won't tag along behind. If a sinner's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. If a sinner's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. If a sinner's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. And we won't tag along behind. But if the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. If the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. If the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. And we won't tag along behind. So roll over that devil, didn't yes, we? Yes, yes. So I yes. love that song. And so Paul picked up his brothers, didn't he? Did. He, he made yep. it right between them. That's right. He sure that's did. That's right. Okay. Well, you want to do a Bible song? I think that's okay. good. All right. Everybody get your Bibles okay. out. I'm, I'm a li little, little Bible. Bible. Pick me up. Open up the covers. Take a look. Read a Bible story tenderly. Please take real good care of me. Do we throw our Bibles? Oh, no. Do we chew on it? Oh no. Do we stick our bubble gum in it? No. Do we let the dog play with it? No. Oh no, no, no. 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 Do we throw it in the back of the car and forget oh, about it? No. What do we, we do? We read we it. Read our Bible. Yes. Yes. Read yes. your Bible, pray every day, and grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and grow, grow, grow. And grow, grow, grow. And grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and grow, grow, grow. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and shrink, shrink, shrink. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and shrink, 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 and shrink, 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 and shrink, shrink, shrink. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and shrink, shrink, shrink. I don't want to shrink. No. No, I don't think you boys and girls want to shrink either. No. 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 Okay. I think we've about covered it. Oh. Do we? Well, I'll tell you what. We, we, you know, we need to, we're talking, been talking about how we need to watch what we do. Oh, And yes. how we do things and how we live as, as we should, how God wants us to live. <clears throat> Maybe this would be a good song to help I us think, this week to know what to do. How I think that? that's right. Yes. Okay. Let's do this, boys oh. and girls. You remember this song? You got your eyes on? Yep. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> be okay. careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love, so be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love, so be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little feet, where you go. You know, Miss Karen, everywhere Paul went, yes, he would listen to people. That's right. And he used his mouth to teach God's Word. That's right. And he used his eyes to see things that might be going wrong. That's and right. And made it right. That's didn't exactly he? right. And he walked. He walked many, many places to tell about God. He, he sure did. Well, 
Well, I think, uh, did you want to do that book today? Well, would it, boys and girls, would you like a story about a, about a crocodile? I don't know, do we have, we could do that? Let's, let's, let's do this real quick, okay? I know this is, this is a favorite, and he's a selfish crocodile. Oh. So, he's not being very good to his friends, so let's see here real quick. All right, he's a selfish crocodile. It says, in a river deep in the forest, there lived a large crocodile. He was a very selfish crocodile. He didn't want any other creature to drink or bathe in the river. He thought it was his river. Oh. Every day he shouted to the creatures of the forest, stay away from this river. It's my river, and if you come to my river, I'll eat you up. Oh, oh think they he were was, scared? He yeah. wasn't using his mouth for good things. Uh-uh. So there were no fish, no tables, no frogs, no crabs, no crayfish in the river. They were all afraid of the selfish oh. crocodile. And the forest creatures kept away from the river, too. Whenever they were thirsty, they had to go for miles out of their way to drink in other rivers and streams. He ran them off, didn't he? He wasn't oh. nice to them at all. He wasn't and being a friend. He wasn't being a friend, was he? Every day the crocodile lay in the sun on his great big back, picking his big sharp teeth with a stick. Look at all those teeth. Ooh. Oh my. He's a big, big, big crocodile. Early one morning, the forest animals were awakened by a loud groaning sound. Something was in terrible pain. The creatures thought it must be an animal caught by the crocodile. Oh, look Whoa. at their faces. But as the bright sun came out, they saw that it was the crocodile himself who was in pain. He was lying on his big back, holding his swollen jaw and crying big, real crocodile tears. Uh. The creatures drew closer, but not too close. Some of them felt sorry for the crocodile. He was in pain. What's the matter with him, asked a deer. I don't know, said a squirrel. Maybe he's going to die, chirped a blackbird. If that happens, it'll be safe to go into the river again, grunted a big old pig. The animals thought about it. They hung from the branches, they peeked through the grass, they buzzed in the air. They shook their heads as they watched the great big crocodile. No one tried to help. They were scared of him. Suddenly, a little mouse appeared, sniffing the air. He ran along the crocodile's tail and then onto his stomach. The other creature stared. There he, see, there he goes. He's running down the crocodile's back. Oh, but look, I think he's going to try to help him. Look at that mouse, chattered a monkey. He's either very brave or very crazy, said the lion. He's going to be eaten for sure. Looky there. Oh, look the mouse the crept along the crocodile's big neck and into his open mouth. There was a hush in the forest. See, he's going to try to help him. He's going to try to be nice. The mouse took hold of something and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled. Finally, he pulled it out and put it on his shoulder. And look, he walked. He walked along and the other animals watched. He, the the uh, crocodile had a bad tooth. And the pain's all gone. Then he saw the mouse walking down his stomach carrying that big old tooth on his shoulder. Your bad tooth was giving you a toothache, said the mouse, turning around to face the now smiling crocodile. Do you want it back? Oh, no, no, get rid of it. And when you're finished, come back. I have a present for you. He's, he's so happy and grateful to the mouse. The mouse buried the bad tooth under a tree, and when he returned, the crocodile had a nice juicy nut waiting for him. So he's giving him a present. As the crocodile watched the mouse eat his nut, he said, you must be very smart if you can cure a toothache, and you're very kind, too. I'm so grateful, but what should I do if my toothache comes back? Don't worry, I'll help you and take care of your teeth, answered the mouse, nibbling. Soon the crocodile and the mouse, they were best friends. Oh. See, he's decided he's going to be nice now. And he felt bad for how he'd acted. And he decided that the little mouse was so kind to him and helped him, he was going to be friends. Not long after, the crocodile sent all the animals an invitation. Please come to drink and bathe in the river. I won't hurt you. The river belongs to all of us, he said. So he decided that he had done wrong. And kind of like in our story today, he actually felt bad and, and felt bad and was sorry for what he'd done. 
And you know what he did? He invited the animals back into the water and said, it's all our river. The creatures weren't afraid to drink and bathe in the river anymore. Although the crocodile was sometimes a little grumpy, they grew to love him. And soon the river was once again full of fish and tadpoles and frogs and crabs. And boys and girls, he forgave, they, they all forgave him. And he was, he was sorry for how he'd acted. Yeah, and God wants me to forgive others. Just oh, like that. yeah. And you get to make one of these boys and girls. Oh, that's girls, great. That's and it fun. helps you remember yes. our word of the week is For forgive. 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 So it's time for Bible class to come to an end again. And we're going to ask Mr. Robert if he would yes. say our prayer. Have a good week, boys and girls. Goodbye. All right, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. We thank you for the way that you watch out for us and give us everything that we need. We thank you for the rain that you sent our way to help uh, green up our gardens. We ask that you watch over all the boys and girls as they're in their homes and as they're studying their Bibles. God, watch over their families and keep them safe. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.